It was uh, for the first time that the Ukrainian Association has uh, put um, a live performance and it happened in the middle of pandemic. So despite uh, the performance had to be postponed a few times, uh, it still happened. And of course, it would never happen without the strong engine behind it uh, in name of uh, Katerina Alyoshina, um, who was born in Ukraine and spent the last three years in South Africa doing what she loves, teaching choreography and uh, creating contemporary dance performances. She runs a dance school in the Pretoria, Com Contemporary Dance Laboratory, the integrated contemporary techniques such as improvisation, partnering art uh, and uh, floor work. Uh, she's also one of the key figures in the Ukrainian Association of um, South Africa that promotes economic, scientific and cultural connections between Ukraine and um, uh, South Africa. Katerina has uh, 18 years of uh, experience uh, teaching dance and also is very passionate about bringing dance and um, uh, poetry uh, together. So the uh, performance uh, for uh, children, contemporary dance uh, performance, uh, Forest was uh, celebrating 150 years anniversary of Ukrainian poet Lesa uh, Ukrainka. And uh, I think uh, live with us uh, will be joining uh, Fabrice, uh, one of the uh, dancers um, who uh, participated um, in the um, in the performance, but uh, maybe before we uh, hear from uh, Fabrice, we can uh, also see a little um, uh, teaser. So that Thanks a lot. I hope you can you felt a little bit of uh, that uh, energy of uh, the performance and that um, it was presented in uh, Pretoria in 2021. And next year we are expecting to see uh, the forest in uh, Cape Town and uh, in uh, Durban. If you would like to see forest in your city, please let us know uh, where you're from uh, and uh, uh, we will get in touch uh, to discuss uh, those opportunities as well. Forest is uh, for um, uh, children, a performance for children, interactive performance. And Svetlana has more information about uh... We're actually looking forward to seeing it in Cape Town because we know the production took some place due to, due to pandemic, but a lot of children, South African children, children, Ukrainian children were involved uh, in this production. And we thank the director um, of this uh, performance, Katerina Alyoshina. Um, about this uh, production, about, about this story which is behind this production. A forest is based uh, on a mysterious classical work of Lesa Ukrainka, Ukrainian writer. Uh, she created uh, her, uh, this work in uh, 1911, so this year we actually celebrate in 110th anniversary of, of uh, this um, mysterious work. But in which way is it mysterious? The main message of it is that um, if we perceive the world with the eyes of a child, um, it actually 
seems that there's always a second chance in case something goes not goes not as you intended it to go. And uh, the story starts in a familiar fashion. Once upon a time, a peasant family decides to build their house in a forest. The forest is full of various supernatural beings like nymphs and imps, um, as appear in Ukrainian legends. The old uncle teaches his young nephew Lukash to live in peace with all these beings. But when the boy falls in love with Marka, a beautiful forest nymph, the story becomes much more complicated. Um, to some it might resemble Little Mermaid story by Anderson. Others might relate to it as a traditional African fairy story. But um, the song, the, 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 the forest uh, song is actually about the contradiction of human ambition and how actually the nature is. And as I said, that if we look at everything through child's eyes, it just portrays um, child's interpretation uh, that gives everything in second chance. It is very inspiring and very spectacular performance um, that uh, Katerina organized for us. And um, I think it not only gives a tribute to Lesia Ukrainka, she's actually the most famous Ukrainian female writer, which we celebrate 150th anniversary this year. Um, not only this is celebration of your work, but also celebration of the connection between people and nature. So um, this is the fact, these are the facts about this beautiful performance. Please, if you have uh, uh, interest in it, which I'm sure you will, you will enjoy it very much, join it in Johannesburg. And when it comes to Cape Town, please don't miss this wonderful opportunity. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Vitlana, for uh, telling us a little bit more about uh, Lesia Ukrainka, Ukrainian uh, poetess, and uh, her book uh, Forest is uh, available to buy in South Africa from the webpage of uh, Ukrainian Association. You can also order uh, some of the uh, t-shirts uh, um, and the other souvenirs related to Ukraine. So if you would like to read it in English or in Ukrainian, uh, both options are still available at the, our webpage, and I wanted to show you that Lesia Ukrainka is also on the Ukrainian money. Ukrainian money have a lot of Ukrainian um, writers, and uh, they also have the Hetman, uh, whose uh, uh, bay is um, uh, named uh, after in South Africa, and that's uh, Ivan Mazepa. Thank you to those who uh, named it um, uh, correctly, uh, and uh, the next um, uh, as uh, there is a Mazepa Bay in um, um, South Africa. Uh, um, I'm uh, not confident, I'll double check what was, uh, who was the first one to um, say uh, Mazepa Bay and uh, will receive a certificate. But we have some uh, feedback from um, dancers uh, who uh, participated in the performance uh, forest. There were four dancers, Nanjiva Soko Kosha, Melissa Schaffer, Fabrice uh, Mine and uh, Candice uh, uh, Schaffer. Can we uh, see the uh, video and with the feedback? Good afternoon. My name is Melissa Schaefer. I am a dancer, choreographer, Pilates instructor. And I recently had the privilege of working with Katie on her project called The Forest. So she has asked us today to answer three questions. One of them is, why did I participate? And the simple answer to that is, it was inspiring. The idea was unique and different, and I've always loved working with Katie. I learned so much from her. And I definitely have to say that the most interesting thing was when we got into theatre and we actually saw it all come together. Seeing the two projections, and how it all tied into the story was just amazing. And I have to give a high five to Katie for putting this all together. And my last questions that I, question that I have to answer is what I think about traditional dance and contemporary dance. And I think that both of them have a really good standing in society. Traditional dance reminds us where we come from, but I definitely think that contemporary dance is more loved by the younger generation at the moment because it's free, it's different, it's expressive and I think that that's quite an important part in society.
thank you so much for listening today and thank you for letting me be a part of this. Thanks, uh, Melissa, and we have um, uh, Fabrice uh, here with us um, uh, joining uh, live. Fabrice was one of uh, the dancers uh, for the forest uh, uh, performance. Fabrice, uh, if your internet is good enough, uh, can you tell us, uh, did you knew anything about Ukraine before joining this uh, performance? And you're on mute, so maybe unmute yourself so that we can hear you. Is that okay? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thanks for joining again. Uh, you're more than welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, what was the question again, please? The question was, uh, did you know knew anything about Ukraine before joining the performance? Have you ever heard about Ukraine or what was Yes, the yes, yes. I was really aware about the country called Ukraine. And, you know, because since I'm from the DRC originally, and we actually learned about the world and different countries. So I knew about Ukraine and meeting part of the Ukrainian person as Katrina was amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. And what is uh, your preference? Um, how, what do you think about traditional dancing versus contemporary dancing? Uh, you know, we're still, we're still in that uh, uh, life of learning and experiencing things. But with my experience, uh, I think the traditional that we did was amazing, you know, because I've, I've been doing contemporary not so long. And then I learn about the traditional uh, traditional dance with uh, Katrina. Uh, it was amazing, honestly speaking, and the experience was really good. Thank you so much. And um, Fabrice, uh, this uh, poem "Forest" was written by Ukrainian um, um, poet Lesya Ukrainka. Um, what would you think? Uh, who she was uh, after participating in this uh, performance? What do you think the message that the uh, performance uh, want to uh, um, uh, deliver? Yeah. Yeah, I think the person of, uh, the person poetry and I love writing as well. So, and then the experience and when I received the book before the show, it was really a uh, very good experience, you know, to learn from other people. And I think, she was a very, uh, I can call her a genius, you know, for me. I can call her a very genius. We need people like that in this world we're living now, you know, coming up with the idea like that, especially when it was a time where we involved the kids to participate in that project. And uh, that was just uh, a wonderful experience for me, particularly. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks, Fabrice. And uh, that's uh, how the uh, book um, uh, looks. Uh, if you would like to read The Forest, it is uh, available in South Africa. And the uh, uh, cartoons, uh, cartoon uh, uh, Mavka uh, will be, um, The Forest Song uh, will be uh, coming in uh, 2022. And we have one more video, the feedback from uh, the dancer who participated um, in the uh, show. Hello. I am Tenjiro Precious Sotoboshi. I am 29 years old and I stay in Pinville Cliff Strait in Soweto, one of the townships in South Africa. Um, I joined um, Forest because of the love of movement and the love of dance, expressing myself and telling a story with my being. Um, I believe in healing the next person with my body because um for me it's a spiritual journey um i mostly enjoyed working uh with kids i love working with kids so i enjoyed bringing kids on stage having them to anticipate um a movement interpret them the way they feel they should be the way they want them or the way they see them or how they would wish they would move on stage with us. I enjoyed seeing them smile and happy. Um, most of all, bringing the cultures together, Ukraine and South Africa, combining the two was really, really amazing. Culture versus contemporary. The two are actually um, 
coming together very much strongly. They are being combined. Um, so as the youth, um, when you see a person on stage, um, I would move in, I would use that my cultural moves, but modifying them. So and how I articulate them on stage or in rehearsals would then be the structure on that I'm given by the director on how to use them. But I would be using maybe a cultural move. Thanks for those um, uh, deep reflections uh, on the cultural um, uh, corporations and the interactive um, uh, involvements during the performance. Uh, and I don't know how you guys, but uh, I would love to join also a little bit of uh, dancing. Uh, so we don't have uh, uh, forest uh, coming to us right now, but we have uh, another fantastic dancer, uh, Oleksiy um, Ishchenko. Uh, Aka Alex, uh, joining us today, who is ready to make us move with some Hopak dance. Um, Oleg, uh, Alex is originally from uh, Kiev, Ukraine, and has been dancing professionally for most of his life. Uh, Oleksiy's training, training includes um, ballet, hip-hop, jazz, jazz funk, and uh, he is a um, golden buzzer. Uh, for South Africa got uh, talent in 2017 and that's how we met for the first time just a few days before uh, before Ukraine first Ukrainian festival we saw um, Alex um, at the at, on TV in South Africa got um, talent since uh, moving to South Africa Alexi has been involved in numerous productions including uh, last season Queen at the uh, ballet with uh, Bobin ballet He's uh, also uh, training uh, children uh, uh, in uh, dancing um, and uh, is performing as uh, part of Alexi and uh, Michelle Strand. So, as you are getting ready to uh, dance uh, with um, uh, Alexi, uh, I'm going to announce our uh, next uh, winner of the certificate, and it's uh, Cyril. Maiber, who uh, correctly um, named Ivan Mazepa, Hetman Ivan Mazepa in South Africa, in a beautiful Eastern Cape, uh, there is a Mazepa Bay, named after Ivan Mazepa. And if you would like to know more of the story, how um, Mazepa traveled to South Africa, how Mazepa's name traveled to South Africa, please uh, read the research published um, at the web page of Ukrainian Association about Ukrainian in the Ukrainians in South Africa. It's available in Ukrainian and in English, and you can learn the story of uh, how Mazepa got to South Africa. Oleksiy, I really can't sit anymore. Please make us move. Привіт. Привіт, балака, вона український, на, на англійській, таке буде, суржик буде в нас. <laughs> От. Дуже, дуже дякую за, за запрошення, я дуже радий всіх вас бачити, чи ти в трішечки до ті Ukrainian, Ukrainian community get together and, uh, ex- and introducing people to, to ask to real us and to have a history. And I'm uh, so glad to share with you guys a bit of a dance history of ours. And uh, we're gonna, I'm going to teach you guys today a little bit of a uh, Ukrainian hopak, which is uh, normally that, that this dance have a history of its celebration. Celebration, and the, whether it's a wedding, whether it's a, a birthday, it's, it, uh, this dance will suit to anything. It's a highly energetic happy, uh, very expressive dance. So that's how we used to back in the days uh, when Ukraine it just just began as a, as a country. That's how we that's how we socialize, I would say that way. And also we do have uh, you, uh, lots of different regions in Ukraine, which is as well involved uh, a different uh, style of, um, of dancing. It's still c- c- called Ukrainian, but we do have a central Ukraine uh, and uh, the different parts of mountain uh, like uh, uh, Lviv. And every single region have a different, slightly different style. It's, it's very connected. Is if you would watch 
uh, a big productions, Ukrainian productions, you would see it certainly one line and it's, but it does, it does have a, a different, uh, a bit of a different flavor. And uh, also we do have Ukrainian Cossack dance, which is, um, well, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys heard about it and the history of it. It's the Ukrainian military Cossacks who's, who's defend Ukraine uh, from the very beginning, Wednesday, the, the Ukrainian Cossack dance, it's ex expressions of the strong and power of men uh, back in the days. And also it's, um, it's the way the Cossacks are actually uh, have a time out that the, when they're in between the defending the country, they were actually also allowed to have a, a good time like drinking and uh, like what we call it party, party. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, that's where the Cossack dance actually came from. And um, I'm today actually uh, wearing a very uh, real Ukrainian Cossack traditional um, pants. Yes, they are very baggy. And uh, yes, this is my Cossack villain. This is... Um, so is it the proof that, that anyone can uh, dance for park? Are there any, any restrictions or any space restrictions? Yes, um, you know that's my my son wants to wants to join today. I personally never never taught him Ukrainian dance, but once I was playing the music earlier, uh, just to prepare myself for a little bit of a black, what I'm going to teach you guys, so, uh, a couple of counts, uh, so you guys just can feel it. So it's nothing nothing difficult, but it's um, it's a very common moves. Okay, and my son said, I want to be part of it. So he's five years old. He wants to do it. Everyone can do it. You know, this is nothing. We're going to go nice and slow. And yes, and we're going to have a fun. I will explain a little bit each movement, uh, what the what the meaning behind. And uh, yes, and I think my wife as well, actually, hiding in the back. She also wearing Ukrainian uh, Ukrainian dress and uh, she, she will join us. Will you join us? If your family, similar to Alex's family, is going to uh, do Hopak, uh, please send us a photo in the comments and uh, we will be ready to send uh, the third uh, certificate for the Homewood uh, uh, prizes. So please uh, show us how you are dancing Hopak. Yes. Okay, guys, we're going to start. So this is this day's uh, Zoom and online classes are a huge part of the uh, dance dance culture all around the world. So I'm so used to it. So what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to send um, a back to you. So it will be easier for me. So basically, you will be it will be feel like you right right behind me, and you can just copy it after me. So we're going to start um, with uh, called Kavrialichka. Yes, so let me just, <laughs> my son is trying to, let me just see, make sure you all see my feet. Yes, like that will be better. Okay, so we're going to put our hands on the waist. Yes, uh, the, if it's a man, we normally put a fist. If it's a ladies, we put it gently like this. Yes, and then elbows open to the side. And a nice and strong posture, we roll on the shoulders back. Nice and tall, and we're gonna go with the right leg. We're gonna go toe, heel, tap, tap, tap. And we're gonna go the same movement with the left leg. Toe, heel, tap, tap, tap. Okay? So we're gonna repeat twice the same, the same movement, okay? So we're gonna go for one, two, three, and four, five, six, Seven, eight. Then from there, we're going to do, we call um, big knock, uh, which is um, because Ukrainian dance have lots of, lots of dynamic. It's a lot of covering, running. Yeah, we are free uh, nation. We, we, um, we are very, very like, yes, we love the freedom. So we run. And then once we run, it's called um, uh, big knock. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> Then it's it's gonna normally we would do like that, but in today's case we're just gonna run forward and we're gonna open arms one and two, top top top, and then we do back one and two, top top top. Okay, 
So we're going to try once again from the beginning. So we're going to go one, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, and eight. Repeat again. One, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we run forward. Oh, and, and two, not top, top, back, and two, top, top, top. Okay, so as we're running forward, we're going to open arms, top, top, top. And as we're going back, we're closing arms back to our waist, okay? All right, so I'm not too fast. We can continue. The next move, we're going to incorporate uh, call to knock, yes, which is, um, it's, a, it's a cheeky movement, yeah? So boys back in the days love to jump into, uh, into a girl's yard, yeah, if they like it. They're like the 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 tenok, mm, we normally it's a, it's a it's a fence, and fence was about this this high, yeah, like a meter. And the boys are normally jumping jumping over to get into into a girl's yard to get their attention. Yeah, they be naughty. So and that's where the history has come from. So we're jumping over over the tenok, which is mean we're jumping over the fence, yes? So we're gonna go like this, and one, and two, and then we're jumping back, and three, and four. This is a little bit of a tricky one, okay? So we're gonna go right leg, go over, round one, and two, and then other way, three, and four. Okay, so as you can see, um, uh, uh, boys normally lift and leg higher, like I just did. And for ladies, it will be a little bit. Before. Okay. For ladies, it will be um, just below because you would wear the skirt and it's just not going to look right if you will lift your legs uh, too high. So you can just do a smaller one for ladies, yeah? And smaller one. The same movement, but just the legs doesn't have to come up as high. Okay, so we're going to try it one more time to knock. Okay, we're going to and one and two, three and four. Okay, so now we're going to do, we're going to try to join all of this together from the beginning. Okay, so we're going to start by beginning position five, six, seven, eight. Oh, one, two, top, top, top. Top, 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 top. Repeat again. One, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, eight. Then we're going to round forward. A one and two. Top, top, top. Back and two. Top, top, top. Then from here we're doing two knock. A one and two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, and eight. Okay? So we're just going to leave it there. Let's repeat once again. One more time, the same, uh, the same routine. And we're going to try it with music. And there's our little bat, which is very common in back in the days. Uh, to Normally we will do in couples, this kind of dance. Whether we're facing each other, whether it's uh, some kind of interaction meant to happen, or you can dance by yourself. Okay. So try it once again from... From the beginning. And uh, one, two, three, and four. Five, six, seven, and eight again. One, two, three, and four. Five, six, seven, eight. Now we run forward. One, and two, three, and four. Back, and six, seven, eight, and off. One, and two, three, and four. Five, and six. Seven and eight. Okay. So how are we all doing? How are we all feeling? I think we are feeling fantastically. It's been so nice to start moving after sitting all the time. So I'm sure we are contributing to not just cultural learning, but also to the health of all our viewers. Yes. I think we're ready to go with music. It's excellent. We're going to try it with music. I really, really hope there's no hesitancy on the, on the other side from all of you guys. Just join us. There's nothing to be um, uh, nothing to be shy. You're in your own place at home. Why not? You've got a great opportunity. I'm going to play the music and then we're going to do all that now with the music. So music will sound to you a little bit 
two forms, but just follow um, follow my steps, and then we're just gonna take it uh, a little bit slower than it's played it. Oh, 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 that's not for everybody. And and this is us Ukrainians. Yes, happy, energetic, positive people. Yes. <laughs> Thanks so much, Alexei. Thanks for joining us today and also making us uh, uh, move a little bit and learn about uh, Hopak. It's been uh, fantastic. I hope that um, all of our viewers um, who will join us today also uh, didn't sit and just watch your beautiful moves, but actually dance. And uh, mm. Alexei is based uh, in the Western Cape. So if you would like to learn Hopak, uh, you can get in touch with him and uh, he will happily teach you. And uh, yeah. if you would like to know what you can learn, how well you can become, you can see a little uh, video of uh, Oleksiy dancing that uh, he did for SABC. It's to represent the whole culture of Ukraine, who we are. Um, it's a soul. It's the, it's the we, we are fun, friendly people. So it all shows it's highly energetic, um, very, very positive dance. Absolutely. Yeah? So yeah. guys. Enjoy it. Well, I'm dressed in your Vishivanka, I'll take your microphone and we'll clear the stage. And Oleksi, <laughs> the stage is all yours. Let's see the hopak. <clears throat> talent with us thanks to your family for joining you today it's been uh, uh, fantastic to see you and we continue to talk about the dancing now we are moving from uh, the western cape to johannesburg because you can learn uh, hopak not only in the uh, cape town but you can also learn it uh, in uh, johannesburg at the uh, orlovska dance studio uh, Alisa Orlovska, who established the studio, comes from the family of uh, ballet and modern dancers. She was trained as, uh, Lviv State uh, at the Lviv State Choreographic School, College of uh, Art, and uh, Joffrey Ballet School in New York. 
both classical and modern ballet, as well as Ukrainian traditional dancing. She was part of the permanent crew at the Lviv National Theatre and Ballet and the um, South African Ballet Theatre. In 2019, Alisa has opened her private studio that is named after a great ballet dancer and uniquely talented uh, teacher, Ludmila Orlovska, Alisa's grandmother. Dance is an art which celebrates human physical and emotional abilities. It is amazing that one can tell a story without saying a word, but to do so requires dedication and good technique. My grandmother was a prima ballerina in the Lviv Opera and Ballet House in Ukraine. So I got the passion for dance from an early age when I was watching my grandmother teaching. She has become my inspiration and the person I looked up to. I quickly fell in love with this form of art. It gave me an opportunity to explore my physical abilities and my personality. But when I started teaching, I discovered my true calling. When I see my students grow in their dance technique, when I see them smile during the class because they are learning how to express themselves, just as I once had been learning, it gives me great joy and feeling that the dance classes make a difference in their lives. It is essential to have a teacher who has the necessary skills and experience to let students excel. I have committed my life to teaching dance and I believe my passion inspires my students to reach for the stars. I am Alisa Balayan and this is my studio. to uh, see that um, uh, you can learn how to dance uh, so beautifully. And I think we have another surprise for uh, our viewers uh, as uh, one of the students of Perlovska Studio, Ubenati Setune, got the first place at the Dance World Cup 2021 for uh, doing Ukrainian dance uh, choreographed by Olena Balayan.
please uh, let us know in the uh, comments if you can uh, upload the photo, show us how you are dancing at the Ukrainian festival, even we are doing it uh, online.